Well, as you can see, I am recording somewhere else other than my my house and on my seat or on my computer. Um, kind of like in the car. To me, it's more quieter. It just felt like going out for a drive or whatever and parked in a decent lit area. I have my little lights on and some that I did, you know, I had the moon roof is open just to let some light out from the moon and yeah. I um I've been doing so many videos about the same old things lately. I kind of toned it down, but mostly about medicine. I just wanted people to know what kind of person I am and through all this medicine that I've been through and what kind of life I've had prior. But, you know, something, sometimes it just takes little to uh, let out some, you don't want to do the whole thing, you know, but I, uh, I'm 33 years old and, you know, I, I just don't know why I think about this every day of my life, but I have, but you know, to me, it makes me feel like I'm a stronger person. And I know so many people out there don't have what I have and vice versa. But I just want you to know that when you're taking all these drugs and all these medicines and and just because something's happened to you in your past life, you know, there's always a way around it. And I know there is. You can always triumph over it. Or at least just to us to an extent. You know when I was I don't know how old you are when you're in the sixth grade. I'm guessing you're 10 years old. I don't know. I remember I was going to have this. It was our last day before we went on vacation for our uh, Christmas little vacations, what I called it. You were off for 14 you know, days. What little boy would love that? I think it was two weeks. I'm not sure. But anyway, in, there was a note that was sent out to my mom and my dad for me to perform this dance. And I didn't want them to see it for some reason, so I kind of never showed it to them. Well, unbeknownst to me, well, I was about to do my dance routine, and I was ready to get it over with so I can go home and get my little take-home lunch and, you know, and all that and get off it. I'm guessing it was 1230, you know. My dad shows up, and he looked very concerned, very, very concerned. And the teacher whispered to me to come here. You know, and so I went over there and I was like, what's going on? And so he takes me by my left hand and he walks me down the hall. We were still in the school, but we were going towards the direction where his, his car was parked up. And he goes, I just want you to go see your mom before she dies. And, you know, when you're 10 or 11 or how old, however old you are when you're that young, you just, you can't comprehend. You can't connect the dots. You don't know what's going on. The next thing I knew, I went to the hospital, and then there she was with, with all these holes in her throat and her nasal gastric tube, tubes all over her nose, and she couldn't breathe. This respirator was doing it for her, and I was like, oh, she was so fine this morning. What happened? And, and all I remember, you know, being God knows what, four feet tall, just I just kind of collapsed on the, on the side of the wall and just cried to myself. No one really comforted me. I take it because they were all still in shock. And what really, really threw me off was this is around 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock and my grandmother was still there. And she lives in Mexico. And so, you know, I told her in Spanish, how did you get here so fast? And she never really answered it. She was, they were all in shock. And by then I was just getting more curious to what happened and all that. And then her family doctor walks in you know, who we had forever. And he walks out crying, saying that, you know, this is it, you know, and I was more confused than ever. I didn't know, I had no idea that that was the beginning of me living without a mother for the rest of my fucking life. She survived and she had some kind of hip surgery. She fell in the bathtub and then her bones turned into mush. The reason why the bones turned in the mush is because she was taking some medicine that I don't know what it was called. Prednisol. I, I can't pronounce it for the life of me. I have no idea. It was a painkiller. It's it's it had to have been. And I remember the days that she was taking it, she was throwing up this clear stuff. We were all ignorant ignorant in the medical field, so we didn't know what it was. 
she was getting poisoned. She bought this medicine in Mexico, the exact same kind, except she didn't take account of the, the difference in the millimeters and the measurements over there. So she was taking 20 times more than when she was supposed to. And it was just killing her slowly, slowly, and slowly. And I was like, oh my goodness. And, you know, now that I look back at this, I wish I could just stop that. But you know, was it was it supposed to happen this way? I don't know. By the time I hit third, third oh gosh. Seventh grade and eighth grade, I have completely just forgot and didn't care less about God whatsoever. I've lost faith in everything. You know, you see all these mothers and their kids, you know, wash, you know, shopping at Kmart and Target and, or whatever, stores, uh, groceries, uh, TV commercials. And here I am not having to have that anymore. She's in a nursing home and has been since 1990. I was 10 years old back then. You know, the reason why people would be saying right now, well, shame on you for not keeping her at home and taking care of her. But you know, life is so hard, everybody has to work. And at one point, she's going to be by herself. And then at one point, you're going to have to rely on having someone over there to sit with her. And at one point, what happens to her? Something happens because she's diabetic. What is that sitter going to do? We're surely not going to hire no private nurse. <laughs> oh, my God. She was only 50 years old. I mean, she was borderline bariatric. She was heavy, but not heavy enough. So picking her up and transferring her was not an option. It was hard to put her from a wheelchair to the car or a wheelchair to the van or whatever. It was hard. In a Hoyer lift, it's just impossible to do that. And it just it got to the point where we just decided, and she decided on herself to have more care at a nursing facility which she chose and we agreed reluctantly but we did and I was living like that but you know what I still managed to go to school every day and why I say that because at that time my dad had a job where he would have to leave two to three weeks out of town to go do some kind of auction cars thing he worked for some yard some used car salesman some crooked car salesman and so I was by myself when I was 13, 14, 15 years old at my house, constantly. And I had every opportunity to get around the wrong people, do the wrong drugs, and get fucked up. And I didn't do that. I went to school. If I was late, I would get my neighbor, or I would call my sister, and she'd go off work and take me. And I did it. And it hurts me so much. And sometimes I get the blues when I, when I talk about her because I take care of people who are in a nursing home. And she hates to, she can't speak very well English. So she kind of isolates herself in her room, watches her little, <laughs> her little uh, telenovelas, which is fine, you know, but. She's just in that room every day. The same room that she's going to die in eventually. And I don't know when that day's going to come. All I know is I love her. We were brought up very strict not to hug or kiss your mother or your own father. I don't know who to blame. I want to blame my father more than anything. But I managed to give her a hug a couple of months ago. <laughs> I know it sounds so horrible because a friend of mine really encouraged me. And it's just so sad having to... I mean, just think about it. You're just laying in that bed by yourself all day long. That's it. You're watching the sun go up and go down in the same sheets. Waiting for someone to pick you up, to bathe you, to put food in front of you, and to change you when the time comes. She can't get in her car. She can't drive around. She can't do her shopping like she used to love doing. She shopped so, she was shop so much. I'd be on the floor just dying because I was so tired. And I can't do that with her with her anymore. And I do miss her as a person that she should be. I don't like what she is now. And people say, you know, God has a plan. I don't understand the fucking plan. 
God damn it, I do not understand it. And I never will to the day I die. I promise you as I look in this camera. I didn't do anything wrong. And if I did, I fixed it. I've never been to jail. I stayed out of trouble. And during this whole time, when this was happening, I had no idea that a doctor told my mom and my dad that there was spe specific instructions that my right eye is losing its vision and something needs to be done by the age of 13, around the time she got sick. My dad never brought it up. I had no idea there were, that was one of my last chances to get my eyes fixed or my eye fixed so I could be able to see out of it. And do you know what he said? Finally, after it was too late, he didn't want his insurance rate to go up. And so now I have to sit here and drive more careful than anybody. I don't know if I should hate him for it or what, but shame on him. Because if it was my son, I wouldn't let that happen. Not for one bit. And this birthmark thing, if I had something like that born, don't you think I would fix that for my own son or daughter? I would do it in a heartbeat. That's low self-esteem, bullying. You, you know, you're just... These, some people and some parents just don't realize the repercussions that can happen to a child like that. And here I am opening myself. My dramatic video, whatever you want to call it. The point of the story is... I took care of what I could. I tried saving my eye, and it was too late. The doctor said, you should have done this when you were 12, 13 years old. I got my birthmark out of the way, plus shaving with it was just horrible. On my face, just planted right there. You know, you can't see nothing now but a scar, and I can't tell if, if it's not even, oh, I don't care. I'm sorry I'm rambling. I just miss my mother so much, I really do. And it hurts me so much to go visit her. Every time I go in there, I don't know what to buy her for Christmas or anything. What can I get her? A blanket? <laughs> it's hard. It really is. And when that day comes when she does pass away, I don't know what I'm going to do. All I know is that I love her.